All right, last class, we, I introduced the final concept project. Con a, a concept project, a full concept project means every decision you make flows from an idea. So the only thing I give you as the instructor is not a set of techniques you have to use or a set of skills you have to master. Instead, it's a theme that you have to work within. And the theme that your work needs to communicate within is anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. You can take any aspect of that, any interpretation of that, any viewpoint of that. You can use any visual metaphors you want to to comment on it. You can do it as a single work. You can think of it as a poster. A lot of the time students find that helpful because the idea is you're going to create something with digital techniques that you print physically or show on a screen physically if it's an animation or something screen-based. And it's going to be shown a week from today to your fellow students. And then your fellow students are going to be scoring your final project based on the quality of the idea, based on the execution of that idea, based on the effort that was put into it. And then if it's one of their favorite pieces, giving it a pizzazz point, right? That it kind of captures their attention more than others. And it's not at all graded by me. But one of the ways that students are going to be looking at the idea score is how it fits within that theme that everyone is governed by, which is anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. In order to help your fellow students understand your idea, you're also going to write an artist statement that gives a title to the piece, that gives your name, and also says whatever you think the your student audience needs to know about your idea, your process, in order to get all of the, the nuance to it. So this is a tough thing because it's all based on an idea. It's like the blank white sheet of paper and what do you do with it? And I have not really even given you the problem. So we have to start at step zero here. Before we even start doing work, we have to give ourselves an assignment. You have to figure out what is your idea? What is your task? And that's defining the problem. So we know it fits under anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions for this semester. I try to change it each semester. But how are you going to define that for yourself? And we're going to do that with what's called a statement summary. So I went over this in the last video, but this is what we need to actually post in class today, along with some thumbnails so I can do individual critiques with you. And it's all part of proving ground number four. And that's the last proving ground you need to finish in order to earn your creative problem solving badge. So this is just an article arguing that no matter what you're trying to accomplish, this is about writing, uh, crafting a one sentence synopsis, you know, like the blurb, the thing that summarizes. People talk about this for personal mission statements, you know, in leadership classes. What do you stand for? What are you about, right? That's helpful in visual art as well, just to do this one sentence synopsis first, no matter how weird that sentence might be. So I give you the past student example of, I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize their society's need to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important, exclamation mark. Now, I like this because it starts with an action, right? And it's not an action of, I want to communicate this, or I, I want people to think about this. You have to say, like, I am going to communicate this. <laughs> this, is, this is what I will show. This might say, I will show that Paris Hilton was completely underrated <laughs> and shouldn't have been canceled. Like, that could be my idea, and that could fit under anti-censorship, right? But then I have to kind of show with my artwork and my, and my thumbnails how I think Paris Hilton was unfairly censored in society. And then I can write an artist statement about how our society is just always biased against the rich. And she couldn't help how she was born. She couldn't help being genetically gifted. No, I'm not going to go on with this. <laughs> All right. Once you've written your one sentence summary, which can change, right? But I want to challenge you all to start with that. Try to put something down and then you hold yourself to it. 
if creativity is all about working outside of the box, thinking outside of the box, finding solutions outside of the box, this is where you define your box, right? This is where you draw a box around what you're trying to communicate. Then step two is brainstorming. So once you've written your sentence, then you want to write down. I actually recommend writing it down. And I don't do that in, a, in digital sketching because it takes me forever to write in digital sketching. But you can also sketch. And if you need paper, if you need pencils, you know, all of that's available to you. Uh, what obvious imagery occurs to you just immediately once you look at your idea? So I'm thinking about Paris Hilton censored. I immediately think of like images of Paris Hilton, right? And I think of like this censored red band thing being over her. That's just what I think of. And then I might think of, okay, what are some other cliches for people being censored or banned? I think of like prison cells. And, you know, I can go on and on. So I just acknowledge those. It doesn't mean that that's going to make it into your final idea, but you need to acknowledge the cliches. So no matter what cliches occur to you, visual cliches tend to be metaphors. Things like um, a big fish eating a little fish or things like scales being out of balance. And these cliches will help you create some thumbnail sketches. Sometimes your thumbnail sketches, I want you to do at least three, right? I usually recommend five. Because your first sketch, you're always pretty confident, oh yeah, this is gonna work. But then by the time you do your third sketch, you realize all the problems with your first sketch. So, these sketches, these are different than our logo sketches, which were doing the same logo idea symmetrically, um, dynamically, or, or, and playing with positive and negative space. This, I want you to actually have three different solutions to that same statement, that same sentence. Three entirely kind of different solutions, not just subtle variations on it. And that's why they should be really loose you should not spend a lot of time. And then I'm gonna talk to you about them today. So that's gonna be our first individual critique. We're gonna try to make sure your, your ideas are clear, and then we're gonna talk about what is the strongest one, and then how can you push forward with that. Once we've had that critique, then you're going to start collecting references that go along with the idea, and you're gonna make a refined sketch. And that refined sketch once you have that posted, some of you will have that posted by today, right? Then we can talk about it, and then you're off to the races already knowing how you're working on it. And I'd like that to be the case for everyone today, because once you have your refined sketch, then you're excited about the process, exciting about working on it, whether it's digital painting, whether it's compositing, whatever method it is. And I am available for Zoom meetings. I am available you know, after class today so that we can get to that step. So you don't have to wait until Monday and then just have like no time to finish it and print it before Wednesday. And then we move up. Once you know what your refined sketch is, you have clarity of your idea, you're just deep into the creation phase. And you're, you get to decide what programs to use, what techniques to use. They can even go outside of ones we've learned in the class if there's other things you want to try or that you have experience with. Uh, it can be an animation. It can be a slideshow. It can be something that needs to be screen presented, but realize that you still need to present it in class. So generally, the, the strongest product for a gallery show is printed, but you'll decide what your, your end product is. So this student decided to do it based on digital inking and coloring, created a raster illustration, then just composited a few things like the Google search icon and put some type over it. And then, this is what we'll talk about next class on Monday, you really have to think about how it's gonna be physically presented in the room. What physical size will it be? how to best print it, and then also writing your artist statement and just putting it next to the artwork. And the artist statement should be no more than one page. It does not need to fill a page. So here's a nice example of the, the artist statement that went with this piece. 
And your artist statement pretty much includes your summary statement, right? That's kind of the thesis of it. But then you elaborate on it with your process. Now, to get full credit for this proving ground, which you want to do, you're going to click on reply below. And you're going to create three rough thumbnail solutions and post those. You're going to post your, your summary statement. And then we're going to do that critique. And then you're going to post a refine sketch. So here is my just demo of it. This was one about, you know, starting COVID. This was our first remote semester. And the theme was about something like posters of the moment, like something about summarizing how you're feeling in these times, right? So this was my example summary sentence. Collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. So that's kind of just a statement, right? And then, then I have to illustrate that statement. So I posted that, and then I made these sketches. Very different ideas, right? And then once I met with the instructor and kind of thought about it, we I put kind of some of the ideas together. I did a little bit of a tonal sketch, so it was about light and kind of plugging in and becoming reconnected as opposed to disconnected. All right. So that is everything.